Hello everyone, I'm your host Emily. Welcome to Sports Incorporated. Today, we will be highlighting the beginning of football season and the excitement of the baseball playoffs. First, let's hear about NFL kickoff weekend. Next will be the commentary on MLB playoffs. And stay tuned to learn about the latest controversy in professional sports. Now here's Jonathan with breaking news and insights on football. Thank you, Emily. Good morning, America. Let's look back at week one of the NFL season, starting in Foxborough with the defending champions, the New England Patriots. They lost badly. It was sad. It was, the score was 42 to 27. This was the worst loss in Bill Belichick and Brady's career. They were leading at the end of the first half and blew it. They just nearly, they lost how the Falcons lost to them in the Super Bowl. But I think they'll bounce back. But I am skeptical about if they can win back-to-back -back championships with their defense because it's very skeptical at the moment. Let's quickly fly to New Orleans with Sean Payton and Drew Brees and Adrian Peterson and company. We see that Adrian Peterson going to New Orleans wasn't a good fit. He should have gone to Tampa or New York with the Giants because his style of play does not fit Sean Payton's offense. Sean Payton runs a pass-first offense, and it worked with Reggie Bush in the backfield, but Adrian Peterson might be Reggie Bush 2.0, and his 1,000-yard seasons may come to an end, and you know where this goes from here. Now let's look at America's team, the Dallas Cowboys, and their star running back, Ezekiel Elliott, who can't keep him hamstring himself, just like Greg Hardy, who played the day after beating his wife. Ezekiel Elliott, you are facing domestic violence issues and we know this is bad because your profession it just as an individual you can't justify your behavior and Zeke has been having issues since college back at Ohio State he drove while having a suspended license saying he didn't know his license was suspended which is very idiotic to say as well as admitted to doing drugs in college as a pro athlete as a college athlete and me being a college athlete, I know you can't do drugs, so you should know that too, Mr. Elliot. So there's no excuse for this. Additionally, he went into a marijuana dispensary his rookie year. Like, what's wrong? But anyways, what do I know? Let's look at Charles and the MLB, and thank you for listening. Yours. The world is yours. Hello and welcome to MLB Race to Finish. I'm your host, Charles Montavano. With the final weeks of the baseball season coming up, the playoff races in both leagues are heating up as well. In the NL, the Nationals already clinched the East for the second straight year. The Mets were supposed to be the leaders of that division, but unfortunately, they underachieved. The Cubs are closing in on taking the Central for the second straight year. And in the NL's best division, the West, the Dodgers are clear favorites to win the division with the NL's best record. The wild card is locked up by the powerhouse of the Diamondbacks and the Rockies, two both young, uprising teams who will be in the playoff races for years to come. The clear favorite to win the MVP is Giancarlo Stanton. He has hit 57 home runs and so far and is expected to hit three more home runs in the next eight games for 60 home runs on the season. That is just unreal. The favorite for the, for the Rookie of the Year is the NL is Cody Bellinger, who hit 40 home runs so far, the most by a, a, an NL rookie in a season. The AL is looking the same exact way. In the West, you have the Astros controlling the division, being led by the AL favorite to be Jose Altuve. He's been close to 400, one of the only players to ever do that in baseball. In the Central, you have the Cleveland Indians, who are running all over the league, posting the AL's longest streak at 22 games. They are doing things that no other team has done before. They are the clear favorites to win it all in the American League, 
In the East, you have the Red Sox hanging on to the division with the Yankees breathing down their necks. In the wild card, you have the Yankees and the Twins, who are both who are both tied with about five games left at a two-game reach behind behind them. This one should be interesting as the season is coming to a close. Mike Trout and Jose Altuve are neck to neck to be the MVP of the NL. Mike Trout seems to always be in the question every year. He's won the MVP twice in the last three years. Aaron Judge is putting on a show this year. He is a clear favorite to be the Rookie of the Year in the in the AL. He set the record for the most home runs as a rookie in the AL and for the entire league as a rookie at 50 home runs. He definitely broke out of his second half slump, hitting 10 home runs in the month of September. And that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for tuning in. Now here's Emily and Dylan with Mad Sports after the short break. Hi, I'm Dylan. This is my co-host Emily. Welcome to Mad Sports. Today we'll be discussing all the major controversies in professional sports. First off is Ekel Elliott. He hit his girlfriend and was suspended six games by the NFL. He then appealed it and it got avoided until the end of the season. What do you think about this, Emily? I agree with the league's decision on the suspension. He should serve whatever punishment after the season. If Brady gets four games for deflating footballs, then Zeke should get at least six. For Zeke is a girlfriend. star player, and we really need him on the field to get ratings. It doesn't matter. It sets a bad precedent to everyone. Now everyone's going to go around beating their girlfriend, not getting any punishment. That's not fair. That is not always true. It's always true. We I need don't know star players. players. All right, enough about Zeke. Now let's start talking about the players kneeling. This looks really bad for our country and the league. I think they should just suck it up and stand. All players have freedom, and if they think they can kneel, there's more power towards them. It's hurting our ratings. Fans are getting upset, not wanting to go to the games anymore. It's not worth it. Just stand up. It'll bring change to this country. Now people won't be oppressed anymore. Oppressed? They're, getting make, they're making millions of dollars to play a children's game. I think they can football. do whatever they it's want. Football. Just stand. <laughs> All right, enough about that. Let's talk about the Giants and their struggles. They are 0-4, lost last week on a 61-yard field goal, and this week on a 34-yarder. Do the Giants still have a chance in the playoffs? Hell no. They stink. Eli is a choke artist. Eli's a solid QB. OBJ is one of the best receivers in the league. They'll, they'll figure it out. I'm not I don't worried. think they'll figure it out. Are you crazy? They're just a disgrace right about now. Bringing disappointment to the fans. Giants could be an elite team in the NFC. They turn to get it right now. They're a horrible Eli, oh, defense. <laughs> Since we can't agree on anything with football, let's move on to basketball and talk about the Knicks. What do you think about the Carmelo trade? He was everything bad for the Knicks. It's good he's finally out of there. He was a great player. What are you talking about? He made all the all-star team every year and had great numbers. He had great numbers because he took 1,000 shots a game. He made the playoffs three times out of seven years with them. Only won one series. A star player should do better than that. You can't have too many star players on a team. He should have went somewhere else. The Warriors got uh, Steph Curry, Thompson, Draymond hey, Green. He come on with the face of the franchise. The franchise. Yes. What? <sighs> That's all we have for Mad Sports today. Thank you for watching. Sports Incorporated, and tune in tomorrow at 9.50 for more action. Number. I was lightning before the thunder. Thunder, thunder, thunder.